Now it's time for Perspective on the programme. And my guest today is a man, if you'll pardon the terrible pun, really does have two strings to his bow. He is, first of all, a Russian-born Austrian classical violinist who was named by the International Classical Music Awards as Young Artist of the Year back in 2015. Since then, he's done so much more, performing at all the great venues worldwide, Carnegie Hall in New York, the Scala in Milan, Berlin, London. He's playing again here in Paris soon as well, right across the world, really. He's also a great philanthropist, spending much time working with and helping a series of charities. He's even uh, UNICEF's Austria Honorary Representative. Yuri Revich uh, joins me now here in the studio. Thanks very much for coming in to talking to us. Okay. Before we talk, though, we need to hear the music, don't we? Let's have a, a little snapshot of uh, one of, uh, just one of your uh, performances. It is amazing just to hear that music. It sort of sends a shiver down your spine, didn't you? Doesn't it? Um, how much work does it take to be as good as that? Because you started mm. when you were just five, didn't you, playing? Indeed, I started when I was five years old. And, you know, music's been and is uh, all my life. And, um, yeah, well, I had to practice quite a lot, I have to say. You know? <laughs> and, uh, how, how much? So Tell us how much. How much a day? Between zero and seven hours a day. Okay. And you still Mainly do? It's, it was closer to seven hours than zero. Now it's closer to the zero. <laughs> <laughs> you, you've got good enough now, have you? No, no. It's always, it's, you know, in music and arts, it's never, never good enough. You need to be working hard all your life, you know, to try to be perfectionist, but uh, it's impossible. Yeah. Has it been difficult at times? Have there been time when you thought, that's enough, I can't do this anymore? I never felt that it was enough. I think it's never enough for me. Actually, music is never enough for me. I mean, I started to compose my own music too, and mm. uh, no, it's, it's quite fine. Yeah. Where does the passion come from in you? Oh, that's a good question. Passion, I think it's from, uh, from people, from nature. That's the things which inspire me so much, and then it you know, creates passion in my heart, in my soul, in my mind, to create new music, to interpret the old music the new way. And um, I think without passion, one cannot, uh, you know, be a true artist. Yeah, I mean, it runs a lot in your family as well, doesn't it? That's, that's true indeed. And uh, my great-grandfather played violin, my grandfather played violin, my father plays violin, and my sister plays violin. <laughs> Okay. I mean, I think everyone plays violin, it's just like, no. <laughs> and just the violin, nothing else? You no, know, uh, I play piano and compose music too, but when I was growing up, I thought everyone else in the world plays violin. And when I was 10, I told my mom, oh, look, there's this girl in the, in the yard. And she said, she's not a musician. Yeah. I was shocked. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's incredible to hear that. Um, very special violins as well. Mm. It's not just an, an ordinary violin, is it? Yeah, well, I mean, I think uh, I'm, I'm privileged, of course, that uh, to play on the violins like a Stradivarius. I also played on a Guarneri a couple of times. And uh, I always also say that the violin by itself does not really sound, so you know, a really professional good uh, violinist should know how to get out a good sound from not just a Stradivari for eight million euros, but also from a violin for maybe, you know, much, much, much. Does it, does it matter though what you're playing? Yeah, of course it does. I mean, you know, you're asking me a question about it. That's a good conversation subject. <laughs> <laughs> that shows how important it is, I suppose. But, um, yeah. yeah. And what about the reaction that you get from audiences? I mean, that must be um, inspiring as well, I suppose. Yeah, definitely. I think the one of the best parts of my job is communicating with people, sharing my passion with people and getting something back. So, for example, in France is a new audience for me. It's like a starting new relationship, which I'm very passionate about here with the French audience and uh, with my upcoming concert, also, you know, building something, inspiring one another, you know, being yeah. passionate. You're performing at the Sal Playal, aren't you? Tell us about that. Exactly, yeah, it's on the March 7th and uh, it's a very exciting project for me because it's not just me playing violin, it's the whole concept um, which I'm very passionate about where music is in the middle but also it meets other art forms like uh, visual art, dance, and the sensory experience as well. So Sal Playel will have diffused scent, a fragrance created just for this evening, inspired by the water, because the whole concept of the concert is inspired by the water and environment and the nature. And the music you people are gonna hear is gonna be neoclassical music, new type of music, which I create, which is uh, 
I would say it's a mix between respected classical traditional things, but in a more modern way, in a more accessible way for nowadays audience, more exciting, more, in, more diversifying and, uh, you know, with a touch of electronics and some beats and uh, this kind of stuff. Yeah, so it's, it's kind of modernizing it, I suppose, and by yeah. diversifying, doing, I mean, you Absolutely. like doing different things, you're doing films, you're doing special yeah. events like this yeah. one at the Cell Play Hill, yeah? Yeah, so it is, it is truly concert of arts, that's how I call it, and, uh, you know, I think it's, nowadays it's very exciting and very important to make music and art which is, uh, you know, can really talk to people and bring them together and, you know, and leave some emotion after they leave the concert room, not just when they sit like in a museum and listen to the same piece played the same way for the last 200 years and then they leave and with the empty heart and like nothing happened. But, you know, I want people to come to my concert to leave, you know, inspired, maybe, you know, think about it next day, next week, you know, listen to more music, discover new things. And presumably it's about, as well, carrying things forward into the future. I mean, classical yeah. music, for example, might have a bit of an image of being a bit stuffy, a Absolutely. bit old-fashioned. Absolutely. Unfortunately, you're very right. And that's exactly what I want to fight and, to, you know, to prove that, you know, the classical music and new classical music, there are so many ways to present it in an exciting way. And of course, it's good also to have this very old-fashioned way, like in a museum, but I think it's much more interesting and exciting for me as an artist and also for the audience to, you know, to think about something new. And combining it with dance as well. Of course, dance. I love dance a lot because for me, dance is a visual representation of music. So I'll have several dancers, incredible uh, performance taking part in the concert and uh, classical and contemporary dance and also visual artists creating visuals for the whole show. And uh, as I said, also the fragrance, and um, it's quite exciting. Let's talk about some of the other things that you're involved in. You're involved with UNICEF, you're involved um, as well with All for Autism. Um, tell mm. us about All for Autism, first of all. Yeah, well, when I was, um, I don't remember how old I was, I think I was 24, I started the project called All for Autism in Austria because uh, there was not enough awareness about the subject at all. And uh, we achieved quite a lot with the campaign we started. and. Uh, I always say that the, you know, people say, okay, what will one concert change? To raise awareness. Raising awareness is so important for important causes. You know, with one concert every year, we achieved major uh, shifts in the insurance policy for diagnostic of autism in Austria. Now there is a center, built a center for autists. And uh, it's exciting, you know. And then uh, I also chose uh, UNICEF Austria as a partner of mine. Also in France for my concerts, UNICEF France is a partner as well, which I do raise funds for them. And I think as a musician, as any public person, you have responsibilities to you know, raise awareness for important things and to show people that each post on Instagram, even if you have maybe 100 followers or 100 million followers, it doesn't matter. Each post, each sentence now that we're talking about it might inspire somebody to do something good. Not everybody thinks like that, though, do they? I mean, a lot of people are just out there to, to make money for themselves or whatever. Yeah, well, I mean, that, why, let's, why? let's make them feel about other people too. It's important, you know. Yeah. Yeah. The difficult times we live in, we need to support other people. So what do you see um, yourself uh, doing, uh, you know, as your career progresses? You've still got a long way to go, a lot more music to play and a lot more uh, charities and events to organise and support. Well, and a lot of music to compose, so that's an important thing because I'm a composer as well and uh, I'm very passionate about uh, creating new things and new music which is exactly like classical with electronic moments, a little bit more modern, more exciting, more uh, melodic and uh, I want to do more things for films definitely and why not maybe to collaborate with some electronic and pop artists at some point. Okay, we shall see where you go. Yuri, thanks very much for coming in and talking yeah, to us today. Yuri Rovich. Uh, that concert's uh, beginning in March, isn't it? Absolutely, Southern. March 7th in March in Paris. 7th. There you go. If you're in Paris on March the 7th or fancy coming to Paris to see that concert, you can. Thanks very much, uh, Yuri Thank Rovich. You.